the guys at American Musical Supply reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested in doing some videos. You guys have also been interested in me doing some videos with some retailers so we can get some other variety of product on the channel. And when they said, hey, would you like to do some? They gave me some of their suggestions. I said I was totally good for that, but I said, but there's a particular guitar that you guys carry only on your website that I want. And here it is. This is a Gibson Les Paul Classic. As you can see, it's a beautiful guitar. Some of you guys may be seeing what I'm gonna show you in a second, which is this thing is super thin. Now, this is not new. Gibson has done this ever since the 80s. They released different models of the Les Paul Lite where they're super thin. They have a little belly carve on the back. It definitely feels like a slightly carved top SG. Uh, so if you like the SG fill, which is what I do, I love the way the SG fills, but I love the way the Les Paul looks. <laughs> so uh, this will give you that feeling. However, not every version, but almost every single version they've ever put out of this guitar, whether it be the uh, Les Paul Lite uh, Custom or the Supreme or whatever model, they have a standard, they always did the C-shaped fat 50s neck, the 50s neck. And I like that neck, but not on this guitar. I always wanted it to feel like an SG. This, which I like even more because it doesn't have the 60s neck profile, has a slim tapered profile, which is very similar to the 60s neck profile. But I like it a little bit more. It feels just a little thicker than a 60s neck and not as flat. So very cool. And the, the tapered neck feel, it's, it's really comfortable. So what you get is a Les Paul that looks from the front, just like I have a Les Paul. And as you can tell, it's super light. Not too light though. I'm sure some of them can get light. This one, I haven't weighed it, but I was gonna tell you, it's the exact same weight as my American Fender Stratocaster. <laughs> First, no coil splits, no weird kind of push-pulley, weird circuitry. The other thing that's really cool about this is it comes in two colors. There's a black one as well on their website. I think because the black one's a 2020 and this is a 2019, this one's on a discount. And uh, I know this, again, is going to sound like a commercial, but... Uh, something to point out that even if they're clearancing stuff or discounting it, they don't take away that payment plan. I just want you to know that. I don't want you to, I don't want anybody to make the purchase based on the wrong information. I don't want you to get the black one because you think you have to do a payment plan because it's the newer one. Um, the specs on it are exactly the same as Les Paul Classic. You're going to have 57 uh, pickups in it. Uh, you're going to have the same nut. It has Grover uh, tuning keys, not locking keys. I wish it had locking keys. <laughs> We have the beautiful mahogany back, the neck, the same, of course, 17 degree angle on the headstock that you're always going to get. So just be aware of that. The other thing I want to point out is this is still chambered. <laughs> so I'm probably just thinking about that going. I probably didn't even mention that. There still has the nine hole chamber in this, just like if it was a full size thick Les Paul. So again, this takes a good amount of weight off the guitar. Um, I mean, if you're looking for the a Les Paul that looks cool from the front, but it's comfortable to hold and it doesn't break your back, this is it. It is not top heavy. That's something else. It balances perfectly. There's no issue with it feeling top heavy at all, considering it's so light.
So let's check out what came in the case. Okay, face that towards you. Open up, red interior case. Smells like Play-Doh. <laughs> I don't know what it is. There's something about these cases. Uh, I actually prefer the pink interior. I wish Gibson would go back to that, but red interior case, obviously it's a Les Paul case, but it is form fitted, in other words, it's thinner. In the compartment, we have a few things. You have, oh, the Gibson strap. It's a leather Gibson strap. It's thin. You know, it's not like an expensive strap, but I think it's leather. Yeah, it's leather or leather-esque. It's definitely smells like leather. I mean, it, it's if it's some kind of pressed leather, I mean, they get really inventive now with stuff. Stamped with the Gibson logo, very cool. That's a nice little, nice little treat to get that. Um, get a bag of stuff, we'll check that out. And here is a photo of the guitar. This is the photo of this exact Les Paul uh, uh, when it's being set up and being put on the Plec machine. So the guitars are Plec. That's something that Gibson's doing and they've been doing that for a few years. When I've done, when I bought my, uh, my gold top, they had the, that picture, we talked about that. Cool feature. You get the uh, warranty card that lays out the guitar and what it is, who it was inspected by. This one was made July of 2019. Okay, and then of course all the stuff that's been inspected. Of course, nothing else in the case. A Gibson bag. Oh, it's like a Ziploc bag. Oh, I thought I was gonna have to rip that open. That's nice. Okay, so uh, you get a, a polished cloth. This could be microfiber. Uh, looks like the same kind of cloth you get when you uh, get your uh, glasses, when you buy some nice sunglasses. Uh, Gibson USA logo. You get a Gibson gold warranty booklet. Tells you all about that. It says for your records, some stuff to mail in. It says please fill out, fill out and return. Hey, feel. The uh, Gibson owner's manual. And uh, goes through, oh, this seems pretty in depth. Now this is stuff that doesn't seem to me new. I think uh, I remember all my other Gibsons coming with this kind of stuff, but nice. This is one of my favorite things. Let me just double check. There's nothing else in there. I have a bunch of these because I got one with every Gibson I've gotten. This is the Gibson uh, tool, the good tool as I like to call it because it uh, has a flat head, Phillips head, Allen wrenches, the adjustment for the truss rod on this, the way to take the truss rod cover. Um, there's even a little thing to pry uh, the pick guard or the backboard guards off and stuff. Very cool, very, very built well, uh, metal, cool little tool. It's nice to have in the case. So of course a little swag bag, you know, case candy as we would call it. Something else worth noting is there's an exclusive run of the Epiphone version of this on the AMS site. Now the Epiphone version is of course a lot less expensive. It still works on the payment plan. However, it's not the thin body, it's just lighter. So you'll get the traditional feel, you'll just get a lot lighter guitar and it comes with some cool features. So something to check out if you're looking for something a little bit more affordable, but still has that payment plan. And also, if there's other products you'd like me to check out, please uh, let me know. Put it down in the comments. Maybe we'll be able to work something out and have AMS send something else out so we can check it out. Uh, this, of course, uh, I hate to say almost lifelong dream of mine, but I can tell you this is what I've been wanting. I, like I said, I had one again in 2014, and it just didn't fit my needs at the time. It was thin, but the neck wasn't right. And um, this is it. As always, I wanna thank the returning viewers for coming back and checking out the channel. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to put the uh, bell notification and subscribe if you wanna see other videos like this. And as always, I wanna thank you so much for your time. And until the next time, know your gear. I thought some of you might like some of the backstory of this video. Interestingly enough, I'm using my new Friedman Dirty Jurley Mini Head. I'm running it through my 212. It's in the corner of the room. It's actually in front of me. However, the interesting part about it is I have the amp turned down so low that it's below my speaking voice. So when you're hearing the uh, recording, you can actually hear the clicking of my pick on the strings. That's actually coming from the microphone that's about one to two inches from the speaker cone. So that's how low I have the amp turned down. 
down and I really enjoyed it. It sounds phenomenal uh, that I don't have to crank the amp up and I can do the videos anytime I want and not have to use some kind of uh, attenuation on the amp. 